Hi, good morning. It's me, Dr. Muhammad Kazafi, and you are watching Dr. Muhammad Kazafi Views. I hope you will like it. I am just I try to present the spinal cord, uh, sorry, spinal epidural abscess. In my opinion, for the elderly age group, it is a very very common topic, and we should know. You can appreciate in this picture there is a abscess in the epidural space. and you can see there is a posterior spinal artery you can which is compressed because of this and you can see the dura mater how and you can see the shape of the spinal cord and uh, the epidural venous plexus here and fat in the epidural abscess dura mater so you can appreciate everything here and i want to present going to present this case with one case of the analogy and then details so uh, i i i just want to present a case for the analogy which is a, about 75 year old male presented to us with the history of the uh, with the history of the left lower extremity cellulitis and edema blood cultures reveals streptococcus bacteremia and antibiotic are administered administered pre culture sensitivities and two week later the patient again has a complaint of a progressive back pain and the right lower extremity weakness past medical history further indicate diabetes mellitus and congestive heart failure examination reveal a confused elder with the uh, with the non specific low back pain and the other positive finding include 2 by 5 uh, um, pars and uh, in the right lower uh, extremity and the 4 by 5 power in the left lower extremity and uh, diminished uh, we can say the lower extremity sensation reflex and the rectal tone and um, means diminished rectal tone rim diminished reflexes and the uh, and the gait cannot be assessed and uh, differential uh, here the differential diagnosis um, uh, seems to because of the infection you can give the provisional diagnosis maybe some in infective thing but epidural exactly provisional diagnosis cannot be uh, in my humble opinion but maybe few people know that and they can present like this but uh, and they have their argument i can't i can't say but in my humble opinion is exactly directly going to the because of cellulitis yeah we can understand there that some infectious element but because of the age we can say lot of thing then i want to tell in the differential diagnosis which is the herniated lumbar disc severe stenosis vertebral artery fracture oh, sorry when a vertebral body fracture neoplastic maybe spinal cord tumor metastasis pathological fracture infectious maybe the epidural abscess other epidural hematoma and transverse myelitis so uh, here i want to show you one picture and uh, uh, and you will appreciate this uh, and um, so yes so what i want to tell you here there is a for the imaging we did uh, that uh, uh, in a ct scan and the see after ct scan we did the um, mri and uh, both were helpful in that regard in the in the ct scan we want to see an, uh, any infectious element uh, regarding the discitis or the other area and we want to see here uh, the with this picture you can appreciate there is the axial image and the uh, and the uh, and the sagittal image and both images are telling you there is uh, some abscess uh, extradurally and uh, which is anteriorly present to the spinal cord and you can appreciate here so this is the finding here on the mri sagittal and axial uh regarding the further work up we did the cbc bmp esr crp repeat blood culture and uh, urinary analysis culture and uh, urinary analysis and urinary culture type and screening and the ptinr aptt 
an MRI of the entire spinal axis and without contrast, uh, with or without contrast, we did the MRI as I mentioned, CT abdomen and pel pelvis with contrast. Uh, there was a concern regarding maybe the swass element. Uh, we can appreciate on the MRI, but then the CT scan must be done to exclude anything and avoid the litigation here and the paraspinal or abdominal involvement we can see here. And the CT spine, if concerned for the vertebral osteomyelitis and the, uh, or the cellulitis for cellulitis, we can check a lot of things here. So uh, now. I will proceed for the pathophysiology and the pathophysiology regarding this patient or the sorry regarding this problem as we are thinking there is a epidural abscess. So epidural abscess can occur in the lumbar about 48% thoracic in 31% and cervical about 24%. So. Uh, so an coexisting chronic disease is common and the risk factor include the diabetes mellitus, IV drug use, renal failure, alcoholism, prior spinal procedure and the trauma. Uh, symptom typically present with the pain followed by the weakness and the weakness can progress to the paraplegia in our symptoms are generally attribute to compression and, th and thrombophilobitis uh, of the epidural vein and causing infarction and edema of the spinal cord although the arterial compromise and the mechanical and compression are also contributing factor. The Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism however approximately 50% of the uh, we can say 50% uh, uh, of the abscess uh, yes uh, so 50% uh, 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 of the abscess go without a species identification and uh, uh, loculation is typically uh, uh, through hematogenesis spread to the vertebra or epidural space so the direct extension from the adjacent infection or uh, uh, following a spinal procedure. Uh, treatment options such as the medical, if you can see there is an antibiotic while some patient may require with appropriate antibiotic therapy and other may progress to the irreversible neurological injury despite appropriate directed antibiotics. And so the medical management alone for the patient without motor deficit remains controversial. Uh, but and uh, there because they, because of this uh, there is a controversy regarding that uh, so uh, and, uh, the conservative management can be reserved for those with the prohibitive operative risk factors or the complete paralysis for longer than 72 hours and all those symptoms present for longer than 36 hours often remain permanent. Interventional, for example, the CT guided biopsy of the epidural collection, swass abscess, or involved disc, then we have to address this uh, appropriately. See, in a intervention, it is definitely, you know, the surgical goals are decompression of the neural element followed by drainage and the debridement of the infection culture for the pathogenic identification and stabilization if needed with minimal instrumentation. Laminectomy for focal compression or multi-level laminectomy with uh, catheter uh, irrigation work well for the dural pathologies when abscess is liquid purulence. So the laminectomy we can do in that. But if the, if the situation there is a transpedicular costotrasectomy transversectomy or the lateral extra, uh, extra cavitary for extensive ventral pathology or the uh, compressive uh, uh, phlegmon below the cervical spine. So thoracotomy or cervical corpectomy anterior approach for the ventral uh, compression um, uh, uh, non-liquid collection infrequently required. Here uh, the surgical technique, you know, the patient is placed in prone position 
and the midline incision is performed followed by the dissection to the spinous process and the, and the correct level is confirmed with the intraoperative imaging after which the paraspinal musculature is taken down in a subperiosteal fashion to expose the desired lamina. Midline strip laminectomies of the L4 and L5 are performed and the underlying, uh, underlying ligament is, is, uh, is gently parted to expose any purulent drainage and the culture are taken and the ligament is removed and the gentle retraction of the thecal sac is performed to expose the ventral epidural space which is and uh, copiously irrigated. Rubber catheter are passed both rostral and the quadal and the ventral and the dorsal to the thecal sac. So the copious irrigation is flooded throughout the epidural space until the fluid return clear and the discectomy should be done in the setting of the discitis and the epidural drain can be placed and the wound is closed in a layered fashion. Some complication can happen here, so I want to tell you the antibiotics should be held until culture are obtained to maximize identification of the causative organism. Lamectomy without instrument is well tolerated, however removal of the junctional bone and its, um, uh, and its tension band may result in the destabilization and that necessitate internal fixation and it is reasonable to actually clear the infection and treat the stability issue at the late, later date. An instance where a single operation is performed, titanium hardware can be placed at the index surgery and the infection can still be successfully cleared with long-term antibiotics. Extreme care must be taken when removing the lamina and the ligament to minimize chance of the durotomy as bacterial meningitis can occur with subarachnoid contamination. When liquid purulent is found, strip laminectomies can be performed and uh, spare the facet and the minimize destabilization when protracted treatment or filled attempt with the antibiotic or the failed attempt of the antibiotic. So the therapy occur, granular fibrosis may result in necessitating a more aggressive laminectomy and the neuronal manipulation to clear the epidural the space of the debris and the extremely ca extreme care must be taken with blunt instrument to prevent dural tear. This is all about this. As you know, this is the suppurative infection enclosed within the epidural space and the incidence is uh, 12 cases per 10,000 hospitalized. Uh, so the rate is increasing giving the rise number of the spinal procedure mortality is low at 5 percent however untreated paralysis may occur and can occur at any age but most patients are between 50 and 70 year old so the classified this pathogenesis is classified is either a primary or secondary the primary hematogenesis is spread from a descent, a distant focus due to the epidural space and usually from a skin and soft tissue and often located in the posterior dorsal aspect of the spinal cord due to the presence of the infection prone adipose tissue or um, we can say uh, this infection prone adipose tissue possibility second the direct inoculation with the recent spinal procedure trauma or the contagious spread from the adjacent discitis and osteomyelitis and typically develop in the anterior and ventral epidural space. Organisms most commonly are Staph aureus uh, and uh, methicillin resistance, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus, both are very, very uh, common in infective agents and uh, with the coagulase negative Staphylococcus or, uh, and, uh, and Staph and the gram negative bacilli as the second and the third most common respectfully, uh, respectively. Enlarging abscess may lead to the spinal cord comprised via direct, com direct compression and interruptment uh, of the blood supply. Risk factor, we can see the presence of the 
of the cent uh, of the certain comorbidities place patient at the increased risk of developing disease however 20% of patient with the uh, spinal epidural uh, abscess will have no predisposing factor uh, risk factor include immunocompromised diabetes mellitus uh, or maybe hiv malignancy chronic steroid or uh, or we can say immunosuppressant medical medicine sorry medication use spinal abnormality trauma surgery arthritis uh, substance abuse alcoholism intravenous uh, uh, some device or presence of the indwelling catheter elderly patient definitely by himself my patient was definitely elderly and definitely it is a, a cause here so the spinal epidural abscess is known as a non specific presentation and can be easily missed according to the differential is often the critical step is making the diagnosis and the classical triad of the fever back pain neurological symptom is you is only about in 10 to 15% of the patient and the back pain is the most common symptom and and uh, it is only localized severe midline with tenderness to percussion fever is inconsistent finding 50% of patient can say normothermia should not be Deter further wake of work up. Neurological examination: 33% of patient may indicate spinal cord compromise, and this patient require rapid work up and management. Once paralysis develop, it is often irreversible because this causes the ischemic injury. And you know the four stages of progression and step by symptomatology of the spinal cord process. You know the pain. back pain at the spinal level affected however lesion may be distant to the location of the spine radiculopathy nerve root pain radiating from involved spinal cord uh, region and weakness motor weakness sensory deficit bladder and bowel dysfunction retention and incontinence paralysis skip lesion lesion present in the non contagious vertebra increased risk of the patient has 2 to 3% of the following symptom a uh, delay in presentation uh, concomitant area of infection outside the spine and paraspinal spine and the paraspinal region esr if more than 95 uh, 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 at presentation and in patient with display so the diagnostic here if we consider the diagnostic we have to see i just want to give you a one idea i hope you can could understand from both side it is the, and it is uh, and uh, you can see on the there is a hyper intense signal where the where the mouse is there and you can see there is uh, this signals are very very important to understand lab routine labs as i did in my case it is unhelpful in diagnosing but are down uh, drawn to assist the impatient management and cbc leukocytosis is present in 50 66% of cases however a normal wbc count is insufficient to rule out the spinal epidural abscess esr as i mentioned very sensitive crp is sensitive also but non specific and esr normal value vary by age and are frequently evaluated in patient with the neoplastic disease regardless of the presence of the infection crp normalized quicker than the esr and may be used in the post op patient or uh, trended as an indicator for of treatment success recently a treatment guideline suggests incorporating esr crp evaluating in the decision to pursue imaging and it is important to note that there is a treatment guideline was based on the A small set of the patient currently neither the presence nor the degree of of uh, elevation should be used to rule out uh, or rule in the spinal epidural abscess blood culture assistant is tailoring antibiotic therapy imaging gadolinium enhanced mri gold standard for diagnosis over 90% sensitive and mri is able to detect an abscess in early disease show the extent of the inflammatory changes and in and, and identify thecal sac compression ct with uh, iv contrast indicating only when mri is contraindicated and cannot readily distinguish early finding of infection from 
typical soft tissue, disc and the osseous changes. Uh, empiric antibiotic, I want to tell you direct again the Staphylococcus and the gram-negative bacilli such as the vancomycin, 30 to 60 milligram per kilogram divided into two daily dose and the third generation cephalosporin such as the cefotaxime 2 gram IV every 6 hourly and the ceftriaxone 2 gram IV every 2 hourly or the ceftazidine uh, uh, ceftazidine uh, 2 gram IV every 8 hourly so these are the options of the antibiotic operative training not all epidural abscess are surgically trained decision is determined by the neurological deficit those with the developing Neurological deficit are often trained and uh, in a, in a given risk of the rapid development of paralysis. So the patient who have already progressed to the paralysis with low likelihood of improvement uh, are often treated with the antibiotic alone. Presence of the drainable abscess versus a uh, phlegmon on imaging. The phlegmon is the granulomatous thick tissue without a significant purulent collection. It is noted as a homogeneously enhanced lesion on the MRI. A liquid abscess is, is displayed as a central hypo-intense region with the hyper-intense peripheral enhancement. So the location giving a small amount of epidural space and thus increased risk of developing neurological sequelae. Cervical or thoracic epidural abscess are more likely to be surgically trained few points I want to tell you here, the spinal epidural abscess may present insidiously and the patient often lack the classic triad of fever, back pain and the neurological symptoms. Empiric antibiotic should cover staphylococcus include methicillin resistance, staphylococcus aureus and the staphylococcus aureus and the gram negative bacilli, this should be uh, empiric antibiotic should cover this thing and all patients with the clinical suspicion require rapid evaluation with MRI as the diagnostic uh, diagnostic study of choice and uh, although not all patients will go to the operating room and the surgical consult uh, either neurosurgery or orthopedic should be obtained em emergently so this is the all uh, this I try to explain you here but I want to tell you one more thing here like this um, for example uh, you know that the, the spinal epidural abscess is a suppurative central nervous system infection involving the space between the spinal dura and the vertebral uh, periosteum so the classically patient with the spinal epidural abscess present with the midline back pain, fever, neurological deficit, presentation uh, of the disease process can highly variable and the spinal epidural abscess is difficult to diagnose and if the and, 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 and if the clinical suspicion is not high then uh, left untreated spinal uh, epidural abscess can cause significant morbidity and mortality so this may be clinical concern for this diagnosis require prompt evaluation and treatment and, and diagnosis and the, and the managing spinal epidural abscess are largely aided by the advent of the modern new radiological technique include the computerized tomography and MRI scan. As you know, there is the, uh, the patient definitely the bacteria enter the epidural space and um, they cause the infection. So the risk factor for the spinal epidural abscess majorly in the immunosuppressed state such as diabetes mellitus, alcoholism, cirrhosis and end stage uh, renal disease, HIV infection, intravenous drug abuse, uh, direct instrumentation, acupuncture or paraspinal or epidural injection, uh, lumbar puncture, CNS surgery, bacteremia. Diabetes mellitus is the most common risk factor associated with the spinal epidural abscess. However, intravenous drug use and epidural catheter placement are becoming increasingly important and frequent risk factor in the development of the disease process. Uh, Twelve uh, things I want to tell you here. The mean age for involvement is 57 and the male to female ratio is almost 1.5 is to 1. Male little more 
and intravenous drug abuse is 22%, diabetes 27%, Staphylococcus aureus is 64%, and the most common causative organism, the lumbar spine, um, and 48% uh, is the most common location in the lumbar spine, and the back pain in the 68%, and the weakness in 52%, and 60% of the patient manage 60%, means more patients are treated with surgically. And uh, uh, you know there is the uh, uh, direct mechanical compression of the abscess, and uh, and they cause ischemia, then a septic thrombophilobitis, and the inflammatory process mediate this the bacterial toxin. And the hematogenous dissemination, definitely, I mentioned skin abscess, front cuts, and the most common source of infection. And the respiratory tract infection, urinary tract infection, soft tissue, uh, primary nidus from the skin, uh, half of the cases with the primary nidus from the skin. And the contagious spread in the 10 to 30 percent of vertebral osteomyelitis, swath abscess, is major, major and uh, important uh, reasons. And the direct in inoculation, neurosurgical intervention, lumbar puncture, epidural. Uh, epidural analgesia and other invasive procedure is 15% of the spinal epidural abscess. Uh, abscess location here anterior secondary to the pyogenic spondylitis or discitis, posterior following hematogenous dissemination, circumferential maybe, and Staphylococcus aureus is seen in almost two thirds of the cases. As I mentioned, 64%. And Staphylococcus aureus is also responsible for many other clinical mimics such as the osteomyelitis, discitis, sepsis, endocarditis. And methylene resistance Staphylococcus aureus infection is commonly observed among patients with the implantable spi spinal or vascular devices. So the coagulase negative Staphylococcus aureus, such as the epidermidis uh, uh, after the spinal procedure. That's why after spinal procedure, we are giving antibiotics and people are telling we can treat it without antibiotics. Yeah, definitely, but definitely fear of the abscess or discitis because different age groups are coming and they have a different habit of the, uh, 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 of, the uh, of the cleanness, we can say. A better word I should use here. Hygiene. Hygiene should be a different person to person. And gram-negative bacteria, particularly, and uh, Escheria, uh, Escheria, or we can say coli, E. coli, we can say urinary infection, Pseudomonas aeruginosa from the intravenous drug use. Very rare by the anti uh, actinomycosis or the no, or the nocardosis, mycobacterium. Candidia or the aspergillosis or echinococcus is very rare. And clinical presentation, it is divided into four stages. Stage one is a back pain, fever, and a spine tenderness. Stage two, radicular pain and the knuckle rigidity. And the stage three is neurological deficit, and stage four is the paralysis. So we have to avoid this stage here because almost two thirds of the patient present with the back pain as a presenting symptom. As I told you, 64% patient presenting with the back pain only. And pain may be elicited through the palpation or percussion of the spinal process or overlying spinal epidural abscess. So the pain also may be produced through a straight leg rising from the compression of the spinal nerve root. As the disease progress, patient will develop neuro neurological deficit consistent with the spinal cord or cauda equina compression, urinary retention, bowel incontinence, anesthesia, perianal and saddle anesthesia, motor weakness and paralysis. For spinal epidural abscess, unexplained fever, neurological deficit, active infective pathology, and the major risk factor, diabetes, intravenous drug use, indwelling vascular catheter, recent spinal uh, intervention, or the immunosuppressant stent status or infective pathology otherwise. So the ESR for the evaluation is very much sensitive, more than 30 or, or CRP more than 10 milligram. Then it is, uh, and highly sensitive, more than 95% is 
it 95 percent is a very very sensitive for the spinal epidural abscess and the necrotic center being avascular give the um, the characteristic ring enhancing pattern here on the CT scan and MRI is with the sensitivity of more than 90 percent so it is helped to delineate the extension of the lesion help in magnetic uh, sorry ma management strategy as well as differentiate it from the other differential CSF analysis only reveal the feature of the paramenangeal inflammation, swelling, increased protein and uh, pleocytosis. So the recent advance in the nuclear imaging such as the indium biotin scan which is also which is very we, we can using with the an, uh, an, uh, positron emission tomography and it will tell us a lot of things here. Myelography is no longer recommended nowadays uh, for this type of problems and the uh, CSF culture are positive only in 25 percent of cases. Uh, blood culture and the CT guided needle aspiration have a very high yield blood culture however yielding a positive result in almost all patients with positive CSF culture. So as I mentioned there is the management medical management we discussed already multiple times and we know the, our major uh, 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 here the methicillin resistance, uh, Staphylococcus aureus treated with the mancomycin and the Staphylococcus uh, 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 sensitive with we can treat with the first and second generation the cephalosporin or, or, or the epidermidus which is the coagulose negative uh, which should be treated cephalosporin with the cephalosporin and the gram negative bacilli should be treated with the um, with the third and fourth generation cephalosporin. So here we can make a a good cocktail for this kind of patient according to the, uh, the known bug or known uh, bacteria. Decompressive laminectomy and debridement combined with the antibiotic is a method of choice and the laminotomy is an option for the children with the uh, uh, spinal epidural abscess and spinal instrumentation to, previewed, to prevent presumed post-operative instability can be undertaken since they are observed to be safe and free for the major infective complication. Uh, medical management is indicated somehow when there we need, so definitely we cannot deny this, but uh, definitely it's important. Uh, CT scan guided aspiration is an option patient with the neurological intact and, and the frail patient, so the most significant marker of an outcome include the presenting neurological status of the patient. So the uh, age above the 65 it is concern concurrent antibiotic sorry diabetes is a concern and the neurological deficit definitely there is a concern so medical management alone has a high failure rate more than 40 percent failure rate and as i mentioned 60 percent patient needed surgery so should not uh, uh, delay for this and understand this issue uh, this issue and uh, with the uh, uh, with confidence and with uh, calmness, I hope you will like it, whatever I told for the, we can talk about it more, but I think this uh, is enough for now and if needed, then I will repeat the lecture again. Thank you so much for supporting me, sharing me and subscribing me. Thank you.